wonderful world of Disney. And now, tonight's program from the wonderful world of Disney, Carlo the Sierra Coyote. In the late 1860s, the Scottish-born naturalist John Muir first came to the untouched High Sierra. John Muir, a name now known and revered by all who love wildness and unspoiled beauty. His was a free and roving spirit. He sought out the far places the lonely meadows, the hidden valleys. I set forth joyful and free on a thousand mile walk by the wildest, leafiest, and least trodden way I could find. a foot of the high country that did not know his tread. Yosemite and the waterfall of the plume mist. John the Baptist was not more eager to get all his sinners into the Jordan than I to baptize all of mine in the beauty of God's mountains. Climb the mountains and get their good tidings. Nature's peace will flow into you as sunshine flows into trees. The winds will blow their freshness into you and the storms their energy, while cares will drop off like autumn leaves. This, too, was John Muir country. He saw it all, loved it with a fervent heart, and willed it to other generations in words of curious power and inspiration. This grand show is eternal. It is always sunrise somewhere. The dew is never all dried at once. A shower is forever falling. Vapor is ever rising. Eternal sunrise, eternal sunset, Eternal dawn and gloaming. On sea and continents and islands, each in its turn, as the round earth rolls. And then, his work and journals done, he marched off into history and memory, leaving us a priceless heritage. The granite grandeur of the California Sierras. This, then, is the setting for our story the rugged wilderness that John Muir knew so well. It's the saga of yet another free and roving spirit, but a contemporary explorer who roamed these parts a century after the fabled John of the Mountains. To say he was a coyote is not to say he loved the land any less than John Muir. Possibly, he loved it even more. He too cherished its hidden valleys, its wildflowers in the spring, and its wild game at any season. But good hunting or bad, the coyote loved most of all his secret hideaway, his den. This was his base of operations. After every foraging trip, he would return there for rest and relaxation. If we were to give him a name, it might be Carlo. And if we are to know him as Carlo, it might well be Carlo the Content.
day, a strange thing happened. Carlo's contentment was about to be shattered. Civilization, it seemed, was hungry for new ground. And so, Carlo became a wanderer, searching new territory, looking for a home. A coyote doesn't require much space, really. Most any nook or cranny will do. But sometimes the neighborhood isn't entirely suitable. Enough of this. Carlo decided he must get away, as far away as possible. What he needed now was new surroundings, new neighbors, hopefully friendly. And most important, a new hunting ground. The man-made sign argued against him, but fortunately, he couldn't read it. time, maybe. Carlo was quick to notice another kind of bird overhead. A loud, buzzing, angry-sounding bird. Some new kind of hawk, maybe? But why was it chasing him? confusing all this. Carlo's battle with mankind and mankind's odd ways was becoming more uneven every day. There was only one thing to do. Instinctively, Carlo responded to the urge that must have motivated John Muir. He sought out solitude, and the only place left to find it was in the back country. The wild, untouched, unpopulated back country. The farther from people, the better. In the high country, time is like a mountain stream. It flows without interruption. In fact, a graceful waterfall might well be its symbol. And like the waterfall, the spirit of a good man may well persist long after he is gone. Of all the humans who might have understood Carlo's plight, none would have sympathized more than old John of the Mountains. A kindred spirit a wild, untrammeled soul, walking far, walking free, walking always close to the sky. But a down-to-earth man, too, with a frontiersman's sense of humor. And if the ghost of John Muir was looking over Carlo's shoulder, then old John of the Mountains might well have been amused by the tableau that followed.
that indeed. Finders keepers. That was Carlo's code. And John of the Mountains probably would have agreed. Nature for nature's creatures. Nature's creatures sometimes must trespass on each other's territory. The hunting ground of one may also be that of another. But Carlo was smart enough to know when he was overmatched. And he chose not to tangle with the cougar. More than most, the coyote must live by his wits. And part of the art is in knowing when not to do the wrong thing. And so, Carlo continued his journey, climbing always higher and higher. It was rough going at times, but he was determined to get away from cougars who might be hostile and people who invariably seemed unfriendly. Then suddenly, it was all easy going on a sort of man-made bridge. This was a surprise, a concrete highway in the mountains, strange, but not unwelcome. Presently, Carlo stumbled on a scene that was to change his whole way of life. He couldn't know that at the moment. In fact, the last thing he wanted was more people. But as fate would have it, he and these humans were about to enter into an amazing relationship. Guess that's it. Got everything you need? It's too late now if we haven't. Sally, you think you can set up housekeeping with only three tons of supplies? I'll make out. Man, I don't envy you two. Stuck up here all winter. We'll be too busy to worry about it. We certainly will. With the power company wanting its daily reports on snowfall, weather, stream flow, all that stuff. That's what we came up here for. Well, you can have it. I'd never last in this Siberia. Come Christmas, we'll send you a postcard. Oh, yeah? How? Carrier pigeon? Better fill them up with antifreeze. <laughs> so long and take care. Better get going, Mike. You sit here, Gavin, you just might get snowed in. The very thought chills my bones. So long, you not-too-bright people. So long, softy. Well, girl, think we can make it? Six long months ahead, maybe seven. Who was it just said, too late now if we can't? Okay, let's put the chickens away. Ah, yes, chickens. It might well be worth hanging around here in spite of the humans. Come nightfall, a coyote is at his best. have thought of this, let nature take its course, he would have said. Time passed and Carlo lingered in this promising country. He might not try the chicken caper again, not while a man with a gun was around. But surely there was other game to be found in these parts. The turning leaves might have told him harsher times were coming, but somehow he missed the signal. And the 
first snow caught him quite by surprise. His immediate reaction was one of pleasure. Say, this white stuff seemed fun. He had never known it this soft and this deep. It brought out a playful streak in him. became a blizzard, the fun was over. Carlo took cover to wait it out. By now, most of the game in these parts had left the high country, had gone down to lower elevations like the deer, or else, like the squirrels, had gone to bed to hibernate. As a result, Carlo's normal diet was much reduced. This was an empty scene in which he seemed the only inhabitant. He was beginning to know what cold meant. Real bone-chilling ice water cold. came that lucky day when he spied the fat rabbit. What a break. Game at last. The only trouble was this was no ordinary rabbit. This was a snowshoe hare, so-called because his feet let him travel on top of the snow, while Carlos broke through under his greater weight. The hare skimmed while he plowed, an uneven chase at best. With only futility and frustration at the end, and hunger as a kind of bitter sauce. by now, Carlo would eat most anything, even some half-frozen berries the jays and chickadees had ignored. This was tidbit stuff, for the birds for sure. But there was little else he could do. Starvation dictates strange menus sometimes. In time, almost inevitably, hunger brought Carlo back to the chicken coop. Was it worth the gamble? The risk of being shot at again? He couldn't quite decide. We're not forgetting anything. You sure you have enough warm shirts? Mm-hmm. And socks? Mm-hmm. What about extra gloves? Remember last time. Sally, I'm a big boy now. Mm. You have grown at that. And I'm old enough to be your... your husband. <laughs> Which, incidentally, you are. Right. What I am not is a Boy Scout leaving on his first overnight camp out. <laughs> There's enough stuff in there to outfit an Arctic expedition. Well, this is Arctic weather. Don't forget it. I'm only going to be gone a few days. And besides, they'll line cabins all along that trail. Pine Creek, Stone Ridge, Parker Meadows, all with phones and lots of firewood. I'll keep in touch. Mm. I'll still worry. That's my prerogative, you know. I'm only going to be gone 10 days. Then if you don't hear from me, then you can start worrying. 
But until then, let me do the worrying about you being here all alone, huh? I'll be fine. I have plenty to do. Except I hate to eat alone without you across the table. <laughs> well, can't say to blame you. Well, it's not that you're so handsome, it's just that I'm used to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Here we go. See you soon. Mm. Now things were really looking up. A man with a gun seemed to be leaving. A good sign. At last, the coast was clear. five minutes and he'd be in and out of here like the professional he was. He'd be long gone before the man could even turn around. Well, that was Carlo's plan. What he hadn't figured on was some belligerent chickens, agile as blue jays and loud as crows. put the hex on Carlo, and soon the tables were turned. How can you properly steal a chicken when it's pecking your nose off? Carlo knew he ought to get out of here before somebody came. And of course, he was right. Somebody did. So beat it. Out. Out. Out you go. Out you go. Get. And don't come back, you little thief. Especially if my husband's here. From strange beginnings come strange friendships sometimes. Carlo lingered in the neighborhood and often watched the woman going about her chores. He paid very close attention whenever she happened to carry a lunch on her rounds, for the scent alone was enough to overcome all caution. Oh, you again. Come on out here. Let me take a look at you. You must be starving. Here, try this. I get the message. Looks like you can use this food more than I can, but... Well, if you'll leave my chickens alone, I'll gladly share. picnic quite like this, or such company. Cookies, maybe? Homemade. My best recipe.
apples too? I swear you'd eat anything. And so it was that a curious relationship developed. Carlo, for his part, had met his first sympathetic person. And Sally Watson had found someone to keep her company during the long periods when her husband was gone. Meanwhile, many miles away, Chuck Watson continued his patrol through the backcountry. For him, working for the power company had its own satisfactions. The being his own man, the freedom, the out of doors. There were drawbacks, true. The isolation could get to one at times, and the severe cold. But he could cope with all that. And for his money, this was definitely better than reading meters on the city streets. By now, Carlo had worked out a certain patrol of his own. It wasn't reading meters or anything like that, but it had its regular stops. For a creature of the wild, he had become surprisingly forward, but always with an ulterior motive, a ham sandwich. Hi there, freeloader, handout artist or whatever you are. Moocher, maybe? You're not fooling me. I know it's food, not friendship you're after. And you'll get it. But after, I've got work to do right now. The girl only reluctantly sent him away and hoped he wouldn't go far. For she, too, had come to enjoy these secret rendezvous. Still, there were things to be done, she realized. Things more important than coyote watching. With her husband gone, it was up to her to make the rounds. Checking stations, taking readings, and jotting down the data the power company would need. Important work, this. Important enough to keep two people marooned in the mountains all winter long. All this, just so the lights could burn in the cities below, and power continue to flow to hospitals, traffic signals, and movie theaters. Oh, no. Suddenly, all this important work went out the window. Her special coyote was in trouble. Carlo, it appeared, had stumbled into a long-forgotten trap left behind by some negligent trapper. Okay. I've got to get you out of this, whether you like it or not. I hope you don't think I did this to you. I'm just trying to help. Everything's all right. Nothing's broken. Some pinched toes. Now we're going to celebrate. And this time I've got some real goodies for you. I don't blame you. Not one bit. fall of her own, Sally Watson had lost a friend. She knew she would miss him. Now, lunch in the open wouldn't be quite the same. Well, so you changed your mind. Welcome back. 
glad you've decided I'm your friend. just out of hibernation is a ravenous bear, and apt to be savage and dangerous, too. In this unpredictable situation, anything might happen. keep today, old boy. Meanwhile, in the back country, Chuck Watson had met with heavy going. It was not unexpected. A Sierra snowstorm can come up at any time. In fact, these mountains see some of the heaviest snows ever. And he knew it was time to take cover. when he reached Pine Creek, but he knew he could report in from here and get thawed out with a fire and some hot coffee. Hello, Rock Creek. Hello. Hello, do you read me? A fallen tree, wires down, system dead. At the moment, no calls were going through. Not on this circuit, anyway. As troubleshooter, Watson knew there was a problem somewhere along the line, and it was his job to find it. But in the morning, there was nothing he could do now in the dark. Besides, he hadn't really been warm for the past three days. Next day, Chuck Watson was underway again. He was an old hand at this troubleshooting, and the trick was to follow the phone lines until he came to the problem. It could be hungry squirrels chewing away the insulation. It could be lightning damage, connections iced up, any number of things. It just took patient slogging. routine. Sometimes the weight of ice frozen on the wires would do it. Watson didn't bother to check out the whys. The thing to do now was to get up the pole and do some splicing. strikes, it often strikes swiftly, and a telephone lineman's work is not without hazard. Watson had taken a bad fall, and lucky for him, the soft snow had provided a protective cushion. But had it been protection enough? A shooting pain in one leg said no. Now his problem was much more serious than a broken telephone line. Now he might need a few repairs himself. Back 
Back at Lost Lake, meanwhile, Sally Watson's anxiety had been growing. By now, her misgivings were beginning to get the best of her. Intuition seemed to tell her there was something wrong. It was not like her husband to go this long without calling in. Of course, if her phone was dead, then maybe his was too. And maybe her fears were groundless. But rationalizing things wasn't going to help. She had to know, and know now. WQ2R, Lost Lake calling. WQ2R, Lost Lake calling Rock Creek, over. Rock Creek, go ahead, Lost Lake. Bill, this is Sally. I'm worried about Chuck, he's overdue. He should have been back here two days ago. Uh, the storm's got me pinned down here. I could use some help. Listen, Sally, you stay put. We'll fly in a search party as soon as we get a break in the weather. The forecast is for partly clearing. Over. Nothing to do now but wait and hope that help would arrive soon. Wait and hope. That was all Chuck Watson could do, too time was running against him. If the storm held off, if his being delayed would stir things up at Rock Creek, if he didn't freeze in the meantime, if Sally, a lot of ifs and nothing too tangible to count on. One of the ifs, as it turned out, was to be Carlo the Coyote. It was a fine touch of irony that he should get mixed up again with the man with the gun, the man who had tried to shoot him over the simple little matter of stealing a chicken. But chance and luck have been known to work in strange ways. And the Watsons somehow seemed destined to be involved with Carlo and he with them. If Carlo was to be of any help to the human, it seemingly wasn't to be right now. For the momentary encounter came as a surprise to both. And it ended up as a sort of standoff Indeed, a chase off. Carlo made tracks, and oddly enough, those tracks turned out later to be the key to Chuck Watson's fate. The weather did not clear as promised, but the search went on anyway. It couldn't wait. A man lost in this terrain couldn't last long on his own and the helicopter crew had decided they must take a few chances, too. It was needle in the haystack work trying to spot a man on the ground under these conditions, but so be it. The searchers knew they must try and try and keep on trying. There were some signs of life below, a wild coyote, but the pilot couldn't very well know that the wild coyote was Carlo, or that Carlo might have led him to Chuck Watson. decided to wrap up the aerial search and put in at Lost Lake. Sally Watson might have some new report on her lost husband. Thank 
goodness, you made it. Just barely. This old bird can hardly handle this altitude. Oh, oh I'd, I'd hoped you could search with it. I doubt we can get into the really high country. We did what looking we could on the way in. No sign, though. Dogs are our best bet, man. If we move fast, they can go anywhere. Then let's hurry. In spite of himself, Carlo lingered near, fascinated by these strange happenings. Then native caution returned. Dogs. Dogs were another matter. He didn't need instinct to tell him that. Dogs were not for him. Suddenly, the hounds had his scent, and Carlo had a problem. How to shake them. As it turned out, he managed that maneuver quite by accident. He cut his own trail made earlier. Soon, the hounds cut it too, except that with two fresh trails to follow, they were momentarily puzzled. Then, fortunately for all concerned, they chose to backtrack along the wrong trail, the one that would lead them eventually to where they should have been in the first place. The spot where Chuck Watson lay. Carlo, it seems, had put them there without even knowing it. Are you all right? What happened? I took a little nosedive, that's all. I'll be okay. You can bet I'm darn glad to see you. Ah. Hey, go easy with that leg. Here we go. Let's get him up. Easy. Okay, let's... Here, let me get the okay. stretch. All right, Chuck. Okay, we'll get careful for the leg. Here. Am I glad to see you guys? Easy. That was delicious. Oh, here, let me help you. There we go. Tuck you in a bit. Cozy? Feels great, thank you. <laughs> Do you have room enough for another piece of pie? Oh, no, thank you. But I'll have a little bit more of that hot coffee. Got it. Okay. You know, I got a lot to thank those dogs for. <laughs> Funny thing. Just minutes before you got there, this coyote came by and started looking me over. I was getting a little edgy. He was just looking for lunch. Looking for what? Lunch. <laughs> he joins me every other day or so. Has to be the same one. He's perfectly gentle. He's my friend. Special friend. Well, friend or no friend, I wasn't in any mood for a picnic. Ungrateful man, he saved your life. Nonsense, the dogs did. The coyote led them to you. Uh, but you didn't see it. I didn't have to. Sally, aren't you stretching the facts? I know what I know. <laughs> well, anyway, I'm just glad you got there. So am I. And so, through no fault of his own, Carlo became a sort of hero. Or maybe Star Border was more like it. He soon learned that if he'd leave the chickens alone, he could count on a full platter every day. Coyote, this was a near-perfect solution to the problem of winter survival. When spring came again, 
all was right with Carlo's world. And now he knew the pleasures of companionship with his own kind. If the ghost of John Muir was still watching over nature's creatures, then he and nature would have been pleased. This was the way the high country was supposed to be. That distant rumble of thunder, might it not be the satisfied chuckle of old John of the mountains? Who was to say it was not?